Okay. Uh, let's start today's seminar. Today's speaker is Professor Mino Song from KAIST. Uh, he will talk about an inter interesting topic, uh, anomalous triple gauge coupling in electrodirect tunnels at the LHC and interference resurrection. Please, please please start when you're ready. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's interesting to you. So I will go on. Okay, um, this is your work with the, um, the two of my students here, the Min and Park, and Professor Yu in Korea University is a CMS member, and he's a student one. Um, so I will talk about anomalous triple gauge couplings in, in electrical dilaton tail at the LHG, and I will also uh, discuss about the issue of the interference resurrection in this process. Um, Okay, so this is a um, <coughs> triple gauge coupling. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a one place where we can look for the new physics, and the deviation um, from the standard model uh, here uh, can be parameterized based on the tensor structure in terms of the five different anomalous couplings. Uh, but if you consider uh, matching those you know, the five parameters um, to only the minus six operator. Then um, there are two relations um, here. So um, eventually, you know, you can uh, parameterize new physics in the anomalous triple gauge coupling in terms of the three parameters here: the lambda z and the deviation here, and deviation here, the kappa gamma. And this is a uh, standard uh, standard uh, parameter parameterization. Uh, I think yeah. So um, yeah. So th this is like a the, yeah. Well, the, you, you can do based on the tensor structure. Yeah. So Probably. Uh, 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 Maybe like uh, um, I'm not sure. I, I didn't uh, look at the all the deviation of the this you know the the the, the tensor structure the analysis of this one. Probably uh, you can set you know one thing as a standard model. Maybe like parameterize the remaining. I guess maybe. Um, and if you go beyond the dimension six operator, uh, then you cannot use this relation. Actually, you have to two more. Uh, you have two more parameters. This is normal triplicate Um So. Typically, uh, we embed this triple gauge coupling in this uh, divergent process uh, in either the lepton collider or the PP collider. So in the lep lepton collider, like the lep, um, this, the, the, the coupling has been measured up to percent level. Uh, but in the um, LHC, we don't have such a, a good precision, but uh, that poor precision can be compensated uh, by accessing the high energy because the two to process basically uh, grows with E square. So here in the PV collider, we can measure this coupling in the high energy. So this uh, E square um, term can compensate the low precision of the uh, proton collider. So they can compete with the um, lepton collider or they can be better you know, as you accumulate more data. And this total scattering, um, as you know, trivially, uh, it's a parameterized in terms of two parameters and polar angle and the scale of the process, scale of the asset. Uh, and typically, uh, this divergent is it's, it's unstable, so it has to decay. And people um, look at um, the laconic channel. Uh, so if you let this gauge boson to decay, then you can uh, reconstruct the extra angular um, the variable. So then like, you can use that uh, to enhance sensitivity to New physics, and maybe I, I can mention one of those work in the CMS. Um, and when you apply, when you when you uh, translate uh, the data from this divergent process to uh, the the SMEFT using you know dimension six or higher uh, dimension operator, uh, you never should forget that your EFT has a cutoff, um, and you have to properly uh, impose the cutoff. If you have uh, some skill um, in your mind, and otherwise uh, there could be an um, unavoidable evolution from the event of above the cutoff, so then you know you might get um, the the better sensitivity than you, you should get. 
So it's it's architect. And and one of the issues is um so to apply the cutoff uh, carefully, um you should be able to uh, reconstruct uh, the scale of the process exactly. But um when people look at only the tonic channel of the dibosome, uh, that should be challenging as well. So then there are some issues of, uh, in this you know, in this point, but um, that's the detail. Okay, um, so this dibosome process are also you know, the theoretically interesting uh, because interesting, but at the same time, it's a limited uh, by some uh, the properties known as the non-interference uh, in dibosome process. Uh, the, 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 the property is simple, uh, for example, um, when you look at when you consider the massless limit of all the particles, um, for example, the three point function, the total helicity of the three point function in the massless limit, um, um, it, it's related to the dimension of the coupling. Uh, in the SM, uh, it's a marginal coupling, so the, the dimension of the coupling is zero. So that means uh, the total helicity of the uh, three point function in the SM model has to be plus or negative one. So this is one of the examples. Um, and then you can glue uh, two steady point function to construct the four point function, and you can um, keep going to, uh, to to get the higher uh, the, the amplitude with the uh, more the external legs. But on the other hand, um, in the in the in, in the when, when you insert in the nucleus, you have same diagram, but you insert dimension six operator, for example. Then dimension six operator has its irrelevant operator, um, so it, 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 it's a dimension negative two. So that means the total helicity of this guy uh, has to be plus three or negative three. Uh, <clears throat> so then you can conclude with another three point and then you can control four point function, but then you know, there is, uh, as you see here, uh, there is no way to um, assign the same total helicity so they cannot interfere in the mass of thing. So the, in the three point function, this uh, relation between the total helicity and the dimension is well established. So in the four point function, you can actually put the bound, but empirically, if you look at the seven model, all type of the four point interactions, uh, except the one mediated by the Yukawa coupling, it, it has a zero total helicity. But on the other hand, if you insert uh, the higher dimension operator, then it's unlikely that you get you know, the zero total helicity. For, uh, unlike, it's unlikely that you get the total zero helicity for the four point function. So in that case, you can interfere. The massless. So, if you go to massive limit, you can actually change the situation. For example, you can uh, include the massive effect uh, by doing the insertion uh, approximation uh, in terms of the Higgs bed. For example, um, you could produce uh, the longitudinal guy, and then you can do with the three point function with the um, scalar and two scalar and then the transfer gauge boson. So, it's a very clear six point function. And two of them is replaced by Higgs bed. So in that sense, you can actually um, reproduce um, uh, the four point function with two VEV and plus plus helicity. So now you can uh, interfere with the, 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 the diagram with the, the BSM. But then the, uh, the price you have to pay is the suppression by uh, the, you know, the VEV square divided by the energy square. So even though in the massive limit, um, the same model um, amplitude can interfere with the uh, the BSM. It's a suppressed. So it, 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 it. Then the problem is, you know, the in the EFT expansion, uh, you want to have one of lambda's expansion, but you know, in the in the leading order, one of lambda's field expansion just a suppressed. So you don't know what to do. So that is one of the practical issues. Um, and <clears throat> okay, so. The three, given the three uh, anomalous gauge coupling, uh, they also uh, appear in the different places. <laughs> so the um, the diboson, the gauge boson can have either uh, transverse polarization or longitudinal polarization. So especially lambda z, um, which I didn't mention. So here, for example, um, this W cube operator uh, strictly involves transverse mode here. That's why you have a plus minus three. And that this coupling, this, this I mean six operator, only can be measured by um, the lambda z here. Uh, I will show next slide. 
And this guy only appears in the transpersonal mode over here. But on the other hand, um, the deviation of this guy um, uh, can, can appear in the longitudinal mode, um, as you see here. So this is one of the um, three-level uh, approximation of the amplitude of this guy. The, the fog goes to two longitudinal and two longitudinal with different characteristics, or the plus plus or negative negative transverse mode. So lambda g only appears in the transverse mode, and this this guy can appear in the longitudinal. So that non-interference that I mentioned in the previous slide only applies to the disk coupling. It's very well established. But here, it's, it's not um, so they can interfere. So <laughs> you don't have that issue here. Uh, OK, so now the, um, if I show you, so this is, um, I mentioned about the, tri uh, the triple, anomalous uh, triple gauge coupling in generic, you know, the uh, radiation in terms of tensor structure. But eventually, those anomalous um, the coupling has to be mapped to the, uh, the higher dimensional operator. So this is an example of the dimension six operator with, uh, of the particular example, like a, a W cube operator. Uh, but the, uh, the, so I will mention about these tricky issues. But if you look at the literature, um, there are many different normalizations. For example, um, one of the uh, the, the, the parameterization by Takiwara is you define the operator this way. And if you look at the recent uh, the CMS paper uh, analyzing the gamma process, they define it. It looks like they define the, uh, the same operator in this way with the trace. And if you look at the, the, another conventional notation um, uh, by Continuo and other company, and they normalize with the W mass square here. Uh, with, with this specific, you know, uh, normalization. So when, when you actually compare the data sensitivity, you have to be careful. Otherwise, uh, you can get uh, you can get wrong by a factor of 10. And also there are operators here uh, with the two Higgs uh, current and gauge boson. And th these are the one that can appear at um, triple gauge coupling. And yeah. So for example, the lambda Z, lambda gamma, uh, in terms of this operator is given by here, and if you lose this uh, notation, then it's given, uh, it is given by like this. And kappa gamma is given by the sum of these two operators. But in this notation, actually, it has different name. It goes like this one. And delta 1z is given by this guy, okay? Or the same guy with different normalization. So, okay. Uh, so here I'm talking about the dilepton process, the dilepton process from vector bosom fusion with the two pole jet. So you, you might think the sensitivity from this process is it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a low, so maybe it's a practically not important. And but I think when I so but on the other hand there is a uh, the process uh, from CMS in, in the dilepton process here, and looking at just naively uh, we figure out considering this in a translation, it looks like in you know, a diagonal process is much better, but I think that when you translate carefully, uh, to me, it looks like uh, they are very comparable. So I'm kind of uh, um, changing my viewpoint, but I, I can mention about this. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so the problem is, um, if you have a non-interference, um, as, as I mentioned, so normally the, um, the cross-section should go like this one, okay? If, if you, because, the amplitude, total amplitude, you square total amplitude, and you integrate over the phase space, then there is a same contribution in the linear term uh, in, in, in the DSM with the lambda square, and the quadratic term with the lambda to the four, uh, the, 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 the four, the fourth power. So if you don't have a, uh, inter if you don't have a nine interference, normally the disk is the leading contribution, and this is a suppressed, so this is one of lambda square suppression, as, as we know in the EFT. But, and also, you know, since if this is a, the leading order, then the, cross the precision of the cross section and the precision of this guy, it's a linear, so you can directly uh, uh, translate. But if this guy accidentally is suppressed by this helicity selection rule, then this guy becomes dominant. Then the precision of this guy goes like a square of this guy. So, you know, the translation is become different. Uh, another thing is here, 
uh, if you only care about the uh, expansion in terms of a lambda, then when due to the suppression, when this guy becomes the leading of the, um, contribution, you, you, in principle, you should also include uh, the contribution from uh, the interference between SM and damage aid operator. So then it just this uh, interference was go like one over lambda to the four, and now it's the same order. Of course, you know, there is, uh, if you have some strong coupling, then you can um, find some new physics where uh, this guy become bigger than this guy, but that's a limited uh, parameter space of the, uh, the BSN, for example, strongly coupled theory, but naively, they have the same order. But the problem is, um, as shown by this paper, I got a week ago, um, these people actually uh, explicitly computed the interference between SM and diamond A operator, and in the case, you know, they are not suppressed, okay? So that means this non interference of the um, uh, between SM and BSM uh, seems only specific in the diamond A6 operator. So that is one of the problems. And so there was, uh, there was effort um, in theory and in, 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 in the theory community to recover the interference and to make you know the yet expansion is more valid by recovering this you know leading with the contribution of that goes like one of lambda sphere and one of the idea was uh, this you know the holistic selection rule only tells at the level of differential cross-section because you know you, you are not integrate the phase space you only look at the diagram so that diagram only tells uh, the property at the differential cross-section because it only like, works at the level of amplitude and on the other hand, this gauge volume is unstable, so it has to decay. So once it decays, even though you know, if you look at the tutus part, the Foucault function, the minus plus 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 that cannot interfere. But once you um, let this gauge volume decay, and then there is a way to assign the correct the heuristic so they can interfere. Okay, so that means if you look at uh, the final state of the gauge volume decay. And integrate all the phase space, then you don't see this, you know, the leading of the contribution. But if you look at the differential cross section, um, for example, um, in terms of the angle between the plane here, the blue box, and the plane made by this decay, the two left one, so the angle between this one is say phi. Okay, so if you look at the differential cross section of this process in terms of that uh, angle, then you can see the interference this guy that goes like one of lambda sphere. So that was um, pointed out by these papers, these people. Uh, so, and this is like CMS, the analysis um, applied to um, 300, uh, 139 invert pentobank, band. And they just, you know, so they use the PT of this gamma to put the cut and then it decays electronically. And you, but you know, the neutrino involves, you lose the longitudinal component of the neutrino but you can solve the, um, the neutrino you know, equations constraint because the mass is known. You can recover this eta of the neutrino. And so you can reconstruct W. And so you can construct this plane. And then you know the plane of this guy. So they measured uh, the, the azimuth angle of this guy between these two objects. Okay? So that is um, the three um, the categories here. Um, in each category, um, they the bint uh, based on uh, the transverse mode of this gamma, like this one. And then for each given uh, PT cut on the gamma, they put the sensitivity on this coefficient. Okay, this is dimension, okay? Or you can say this is a C over a lambda square. And so here uh, there is a sensitivity. Uh, so I want to compare this sensitivity with the um, the precision from like our process, and it looks like you're comparable. So I'm kind of excited. Uh, okay, now um, so, uh, so so far I'm, I talked about uh, only diboson. So now I want to switch to um, the 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 dilaton process uh, from the boson fusion. Okay. So um, so there is a so as, as I mentioned. The diboson process has the issue of this uh, interference thing. So we are thinking of um, another way of recovering um, the, the interference uh, 
we do got relying on some, some differential distribution of the angle of double. So we thought maybe this is the one. So for basically, you know, the, in the in the diboson process, you just collide the QQ bar going this way in diboson, and then it, it decays. But now we are going to backward, okay? So the this full full the quark and the radiate W and S channel W Z and Z gamma star and go to the left, okay? Um, I think that the one practical advantage of this process is the reconstruction of this uh, the full left side is very easy because. And if you care about this, I mean, the six operator, for example, here, um, these are hard process. And as long as, as long as I reconstruct the invariant mass of this electron, then you, know, you can easily um, figure out the scale of the process and impose the cutoff on ambiguously. Um, and also, this is a vector bosom fusion. So, based, uh, compared to QCD induced uh, dibosome process, the cross section is a smaller by a factor of 10, but you know, the bullet tagging probably can help to reduce the, the background. And but most importantly, uh, in the theoretical viewpoint, um, in this process, we argue that the interference can resurrect it there, even like an inclusive cross section. That is something we found. Uh, when you talk about this process, um, you have to be um, carefully deal with the, this uh, traditional uh, effective W approximation, okay? So this is about the factorization. Uh, when people consider vector boson fusion process, uh, normally what people do is they compute um, this part of process cross section and they treat W as a PDF, okay? They compute the PDF because you know like how they split W. Uh, that's what people do normally. And it's known as uh, effective W approximation. And there is a regime where uh, this effective W approximation um, works and you can safely apply this factorization. And the, the argument of this one is this. Um, for example, if the scale of the process is uh, E, theta E, then inverse of this scale uh, is the typical time scale where this hard process happens. And so here, this is a kind of, you know, the uh, virtual of W. And if I define the virtuality uh, of this W by this, the V square, okay? The mass of this square minus Q square, the momentum of this guy. And the typical time interval uh, during which, you know, th this guy happens is, it's E over V square, okay? So the idea is um, if this delta T is much bigger than the scale of the process, then you cannot, um, you cannot, I mean, so this W in principle is off share, okay? However, there, there is a time interval uh, where uh, virtual W cannot be distinguished from the onshore W, so that is given by delta T here. So if this delta T is much bigger than the time, the time scale associated with the, the hard process, then effectively you cannot, you cannot say whether this guy coming, this guy is the only shell or shell. So then you know you can just treat it as the only shell and you can factorize and you can compute only a hard process and then convolute with the PDF of W. So that is like a, how you do, right? You compute this guy and then multiply the PDF of blue W and yes. uh, then this part, but but this the phase stage, this, this property is guaranteed only when the gauge boson mass is much smaller than the scale of the hard, hard process and the, the PT of transverse momentum of this pole jet uh, is much smaller than the scale of the hard process, okay? So if this pole jet is very soft and in a sense that you know, the transverse mo the momentum is very small and the mass can be neglected compared to the scale of the process, then this condition is already met and you can you can actually apply this uh, uh, EWA in general, okay, in general. Uh, but then actually there is a um, puzzle, okay, in this case, uh, in this particular case, if you apply the EWA, um, then you just focus on this two-two process, okay? But as soon as you don't consider this full jet, um, then you go back to your uh, non-interference. So here the gauge boson product uh, collide goes to the left one, but, you know, when you insert the I mean, six versus SM, there is a non-interference due to unmatched the total helicity. So uh, you don't have interference, okay? 
if you apply EWA. Uh, sorry. I'm not controlling. Uh, but, but on the other hand, as I showed in the next slide, if you just uh, examine the heuristic structure of this whole process um, against this one, it seems like there is interference, okay? They call it like one of lambda skew. So then it looks like, you know, apparently, um, if you just blindly apply the traditional EWA, even though you belong to this phase space, uh, there, 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 the, the, it, it, it seems like there are some the heuristic structure that you just trash away by hand, okay? That is something um, we do in our paper. So this process, now we attach the two-fold jet and then consider the full two-to-four scattering. Uh, these are the one of the, the uh, diagrams. Uh, so here, the, the, these are the examples. So uh, this is a BSM, okay? Uh, with the insertion of the minus six operator. For example, like a W cube operator. Uh, and this diagram, which looks like a teacher, and so you can assign the same helicity of the whole part, has the same helicity as this one with the insertion of the dimension six operator. So, um, if, however, if you consider only this uh, sub process, this one is a plus minus, this is a plus plus, they cannot interfere. But if you consider the whole process, they can interfere. So, that means. Um, if you just apply the EWA naively, then you know you, you kind of dump this kind of interference structure. Like uh, but then another um, interesting point of this process is that this is like a T channel, uh, not the S channel. So that means you know, this interference probably enhanced in the forward region where um, you, you expect some kind of singularity, okay? Which is a very different uh, case uh, from the typical thing. So that is a uh, uh, the yeah, so something we promoting our paper. Uh, so we could do like a numerical study only, but you know, um, we wanted to confirm uh, the appearance of interference more uh, um, robustly uh, by computing analytically. But then, you know, due to post scattering, this one cannot be computed analytically. This is impossible and nobody succeeds. And so, but just, you know, uh, um, but if you only care about, you know, the, the role of the full jet, you don't have to, um, you don't have to have two full jet. So why don't we just do, get rid of one of these and consider only one? And here, the, if you consider WW, then you have two engineer state. So to simplify further, uh, we um, came up with a toy example like, like this one here. You only have one full jet to take into account the full process of this, you know, the full jet. Uh, with regard using the EWA. And here we replace W by gamma, then you only have a one uh, intermediate particle. So the toy example is very simple. It's much simpler than the full process here. So uh, in our paper, actually, we um, <coughs> computed analytically exactly it. It needs to the process. Uh, I think that we are the first guy who did exactly this one with regard, uh, using any approximation. Um, uh, by doing this, uh, we could uh, understand the analytic structure of this uh, non-interference. Okay, so here, um, this this is like a, the set of diagram, uh, the the full diagram that contributes um, to, to three, and this is SM, and this S channel like SM, and BSM, and then this is a T channel like uh, process. And this one is looks like a radiation type. For example, you can actually um, split all these diagrams into this category, which is like what I call process of interest, because now the uh, some energy goes into some scale where we want to prove the new physics. And this one is a radiation type. So gamma attached here or here, depending on where gamma attached, incoming or outgoing, so these two diagrams appear. But this is a radiation type. So in the computation, normally, um, if you choose the arbitrary gauge, then it looks like you know that these two contribution from the radiation type appears very important. But that is typically the artifact of the gauge choice. Uh, if you choose a proper gauge, then you can already choose. Uh, so if you choose some um, um, the particular gauge, um, then you can actually uh, you can find that. The order contribution from the, uh, the radiation type are pretty much suppressed, and the dominant contribution coming from the process of interest, okay? 
Uh, in this case, now, it, uh, um, unlike the case of two to four process, here we have a channel like uh, um, the process, and then we also have the H channel like process here, and both of them can interfere with the SM. So it looks like when you consider two two to three process by attaching this pole, the, 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 the current, it looks like you can have interference. But if you get rid of this uh, pole jet, then this diagram cannot interfere because plus plus versus negative plus, okay? Same as here. Uh, also, you know, the another tricky thing is if you eventually, you know, you cannot just have like the unshare W of gamma. So this gamma has to come from some, the fermion current, okay? So if you attach the fermion here in the gamma, then somehow uh, the, 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 the this process also goes away. So eventually the main process, the main contribution from here coming from the, dish, the, the interference between the teaching like diagram and this BSM. And in that part, in that sense, it's the same as the two to four. Okay, so this is a result. Um, uh, another, yeah, so so here, this is this is like a leading of the contribution of the, this process. Uh, but another complication is in this two to three process, this W either can be on share or off share. So depending on that, the process is very different. Uh, for example, uh, if this guy is on shell, okay, if you produce on shell, then basically you can use a narrow, narrow with this approximation. When you use narrow with this approximation for the on shell particle, this guy cannot communicate anymore. Basically, you decouple, okay? So then when you integrate over the phase space, uh, this part is completely gone, okay? So then the structure of the um, pole process is, 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 is controlled by this sub to the pole process, no, the, the pole point function here. So then you go back to the non-interference again. So you don't see the interference, okay? And that you can see here. So the k square, the k square here is given by uh, two z minus one s hat. S hat, s hat is uh, the scale of the process, the center of mass energy coming from here. And z is the amount of energy going into this dielectric system, okay? So it's a, it's, a, it's a function, okay? So dielectric invariant mass is coming as like a function of these two variables. And S head is also a variable because S head is like um, the, 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 the energy coming from the central mass energy of the proton, right? The proton is a certain TV, but only part of them goes into the protonic particle by S, okay? So S head can change and then Z also change. Uh, so in this case, uh, if you look at this uh, SM, the differential cross section between SM and DSM, uh, it goes like cosine two phi, okay? So that means if you, so here the cosine phi is, you can construct uh, the angle of this angle between this plane and the plane made by this guy. So this phi is basically angle between this plane and this, plane, okay? So the interference only goes like, the leading angle goes like cosine two phi, that means if you integrate over the uh, angle phi, then this interference goes away. On the other end, BSM square, it appears uh, without such a thumb. So then as I, as I mentioned, um, when this guy is on show, this guy can be decoupled up, upon the integration. So you, you are subject to the non-interference. But um, now if you go to the off shell region of this intermediate W, where this K square is much bigger than MW square. And then if you make the expansion, uh, by going to the high energy in terms of S hat, then this is one of the example here. Um, for example, um, <clears throat> not only this cosine thing that goes away upon integration, you have a, like a non-vanishing term here. So that means even though you integrate over the angle, you have some interference surviving uh, in the inclusive level. Uh, so, but however, this is off-shell. So the, um, when you go one shell from off-shell, there is suppression by factor of, you know, we just divide by mass. So that is exactly what is expected. And most importantly, you have a, a surviving guy here, which gives uh, non -interfer the interference uh, in the inclusive level. So this is a kind of, you know, the robust proof that in this process, you can have interference if you consider the, the pulled core without using the effective W approximation. So this is what we have done uh, in this work. Uh, 
And actually, this computation was very challenging. Uh, it involves uh, too much complicated computation. So we only computed the, for the specific heuristic here, but uh, we couldn't um, do it for the right hand. Okay. No. So. And then we wanted to um, establish numerically to confirm our finding from this analytic study. So uh, this, this is like, um, okay. So here, Z is the amount of energy, the fraction of the energy out of asset go into the dilatant system. So somehow, uh, unlike the QCD, the Rayon process, it's not dilatant invariant mass to control the highest limit of this you know, process because you know, this is the sum of this guy. So even though you go very far off shell in terms of dilatant, you know, this jet can be very close to half, and then this at, at no, the, the, this 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 combination of uh, can break the, the the big barrier of this guy, but still, uh, this jet can be very close to what you expect, you know, from the own shell by taking SA very big. So it's a hard to um, it, uh, it's a hard to see the offshore effect. So what you have to do is that you really have to control the fraction of the energy that going to the left one. So that that even though it's not experimentally uh, accessible, but it is accessible in the end. So if you put some cut on the Z, uh, this you know, fraction of energy, then as you see here, the, the interference now, you, know, you see the, as energy increases, this guy grows. So this is a proof numerically. Uh, okay. Um, so the, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, you are showing uh, delta. So this is just star is the one the corresponding the y -axis. Uh, the y-axis here. This is interference. Uh, so it's normalized with SM. Normalized with SM. But we only uh, see the absolute magnitude. So when this ratio is over one. Yes. Are you are you still in the validity regime of the EFT? Ah, so when I, when I when I take this ratio, um, I I factorized the coupling of the uh, triple the triple gauge coupling, the lambda. So this is like only uh, I'm I'm showing only the ratio of this stuff. So here the sigma goes like sigma S N plus the lambda coupling and interference. So I only compare, I only compute the ratio of this guy. So normally the, yeah, this guy is factorized. So there is no like ability issue. So you have to, in yeah. the end, you have to multiply now. Yeah, yeah. In, in the end, the, 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 you know, the deviation, the cross sections are like, a, uh, it's like a percent level, right? That means this lambda has to be very small. But at the moment, we only compare this coefficient, so it's okay. Uh, Okay, so the another thing is uh, another interesting thing is you know um, we, we actually uh, we spend a lot of time because we also didn't understand why the EFT uh, the EWA failed because you know the effective double approximation is, is something that has been established very firmly you know, for for many decades and it's hard to see the case where the effective double approximation is uh, violated. It looks like violated here. And yeah, we, we spent a lot of time to understand what's going on. And then another exercise that we did was uh, taking this two to three process, we go to the regime where the apparent, you know, the condition for the uh, effective W approximation is holding, okay? Uh, where this condition is met. Uh, that is where uh, you, 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 pump, you pump up, you know, the energy fraction that going to, into this uh, left one, you increase a lot. So here the Z, is a fraction okay? So up to, it, it can go up to like a um, hundred percent. So we choose the epsilon here. It's point one. That means at least you know the at least ninety percent of the total energy going into this um, sub process. So that means this is really the case where uh, you have to expect you know, this condition is uh, satisfied. But even then, you know, you see like the interference uh, recovered in, in, the, in, in this process in the inclusive level. So there is something. Um, that is not captured by uh, effective double approximation. So it's, it's robust. 
Uh, but then actually, this is so th there is like a paper by Ricardo and this Andrew Butcher in, in 2012. And this is a paper about the effective double approximation. So here, you know, this is a kind of, a, you know, the cartoon picture of this transverse and continuous. Uh, this, you know, the two three process, for example, if this is two body case. And you just, you know, um, write amplitude one over B squared of the, 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 the virtuality of this guy and the current of this guy and the amplitude of the sub process, blah, blah, blah. And so here, the, the proof of the EWA uh, is based on the, some property. For example, um, when you compute this sub process here, the, the polarization multiplied by the amplitude of this sub process, and you can expand in terms of virtuality. Normally, there is zero solder in virtuality, and then the first solder here. Um, if the first guy uh, is the ratio of these two guys uh, is uh, both like E squared, then only this term win, okay? And then the, the guy who has one of B squared singularity gives leading order contribution. So you can approximate, you, you can show that that effect is a leading order, and then everything else is a sub leading order. So that is like a, a, the, 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 the idea of this you know, effective double approximation. But however, in somehow, if there are some cancellation in this, the leading of the, uh, the process of the, this slope process, and if this scaling is violated, uh, then in principle, you could have, uh, you cannot control this expansion anymore. So you cannot prove you know, the effective W approximation is working. And our case uh, is the case, I, I think our case belongs to those case. For example, uh, when you, when in our process, the two, two, two scattering is a subject uh, the non-interference. So at the level of this hard process, we have this cancellation due to helicity selection rule. So there is like a suppression by one of these skills. So this guy is gone. So that means now I, my understanding is uh, our process it is not uh, contradicted with the uh, previous literature. It just belongs to one of the exceptional cases where you shouldn't expect the effective double approximation to work. So that's my understanding. Whether, I mean, but I don't know whether people are real or not. Um, okay, so this is numerical result. And basically we actually uh, recasted this uh, process uh, by CMS. Um, I have only like a uh, three minutes, right? Uh, but I think you can, I mean, before four, I think it's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, people, since it, it looks like people are all, always interested in divergent process, but you know, only like one group, actually, the, some, some, some small group in the CMS uh, took a look at you know, this process, and I, I found only one. And this is a cut um, they applied. And in their case, um, they put constraint on the normal triple gauge coupling by applying this cut, but they only look at uh, the, in the mass wind of the W, okay, uh, mass wind of the Z. Uh, with the plus minus between GB. And they actually uh, go high PT of the Z and try to sense, uh, trying to gain the sensitivity on the minus six operator. And that is fine, okay? And so, so we actually did the same analysis and then we kind of reproduced their result. And even though um, you restrict the, the W uh, Z mass window, Still, you know, the, when you go at the PT of the Z, uh, you, you, you have a this, you know, the very sensitive quadratic behavior coming from the I mean, six square operator. And it looks like there are some residual correlation between the PT of the Z and the scale of the energy. So I think that, you know, that, that's how they get the uh, sensitivity. Um, so, so, yeah. Yes. You DSM scale. Yes. And do you actually keep that one on? So, um, you, you, your DSM is only from dimension six, right? Yeah, everything is here dimension six. So and there's the issue of this. So, yeah. you know, DSM scale from dimension six should be similar size of dimension eight. Yeah, 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 exactly. Scale, right? Yeah, so yeah. You, you don't include that. And then in that case, mm -hmm. DSM scale, do you keep one? 
What do you mean BSM secures? The, 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 red, red uh, the, the result from this paper is, is coming basically coming from this uh, BSM secure term and neglecting this time in eight times SM. And that should be considered as uncertainty, like all the one maybe. And they do also uh -huh. uh, analyze with the standard model plus BSM? Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, so say BSM square goes like a lambda square. No, lambda to four. Lambda to four. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> but there's an e to the four as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is what they did. Uh, but in our paper, we wanted to promote to look at uh, both the upshare of the z, where by looking at the distribution of the dilaton invariant map. But there was a puzzle actually. Um, um, but maybe I, I can explain here. So when you look at this. Um, <clears throat> The Rayan process, given this proton-proton uh, center mass energy, so there's the x1 fraction of the energy, x2 fraction of energy going to, so you, you get s ahead, right? And s ahead is the same as the dilepton environment. So if you look at the high dilepton mass, then you access to high the s ahead, okay? And so you, you can have a sensitivity to the minus six operator, but in this case, it's a kind of confusing because now you have a proton-proton, you have a part of energy going to P1, P2, and then another part of energy going into this dilepton system. So it's a two-step. Because of that, uh, the dilepton invariant mass is given by like this one. And here the Z is the fraction of energy going into the dilepton, something similar to how the fraction of energy going into this dilepton system. Because of this function is complicated, so even though you go high invariant mass of the dilepton, you, you're not guaranteed that you know, the large fraction of the Z going to here. Still, this Z can be very small if, if S is very big. So there's the ambiguity. And so in our paper, we come up with a new variable. It's called the VDF for hardness. And we found that this combination is given by this function. And this function is a monotonically increasing as Z increasing. So if you require some certain amount of energy has to go into this telephone system by including the lower cut here, then that corresponds to low in the VVF hardness. Okay, so for example, if you don't put, if you don't control the fraction of energy going that goes into this dilepton system, then you don't see the interference here. So the inter this is dash line is interference. There is no interference. Okay, but then if you put the cut on this one by uh, by you know if you forcing you force some of energy going into this the dilepton system. Then this guy is now resurrected. So now it's increasing. But this is a high scale in the volumic. So if you only plot this same diagram, then you see like a, they are increasing. So it's a recovery. So, but so in this sense, I, it was very crucial to uh, um, find out you know, this kind of new variable that directly control the fraction of energy that is going into the dilepton system. So I think that this kind of variable can help any kind of vector uh, fusion process. Including like a www sketching as you go, but I haven't thought about it. Have they been proposed by previously? This one? Yeah. No, this is our new invention. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, we are proud of this. Uh, okay. So and then okay. So here, this is our plot. So we kind of uh, um, follow the same on same analysis uh, of the CMS. Uh, restricting events to a uh, ZMAS window. Uh, in the second analysis, we got rid of this, uh, the ZMAS window and then looked at the distribution of the dilepton here. But here, in, we restrict the ZMAS window, but instead we look at distribution of the PT of the uh, Z boson. And this is like a, one of the uh, one of the exclusion plot of lambda Z versus delta Z1G. And yeah, something something looks worse than the divergent thing you know, for apparently. And so here, this one is when you do only with interference, okay? When you get rid of the dimension six operator square, only derive the sensitivity using the interference, then what this is what you get. And then this is what you get from the dimension six square. So yeah, so this the big difference is due to um, this non-interference effect. And, uh, I'm sorry, but would you explain more about the difference between left and right patterns? Ah, uh, so this is the same thing. 
Anything? Same thing because this guy looks like a straight. I wanted to see where it ends. So it's ah, same, it's I see, same I see. Okay. Same picture, but with yeah. different ranges. Yes. Yeah, so if you include yeah. dimension six operator, then you get this one. Then if you don't include it, then this is what you get due to the non interference. Uh, so here we didn't apply the V wave hardness here, but because we wanted to do more carefully in the future work. So if you, my guess is if you um, carefully apply this variable, then probably the difference between the six square and versus you know, linear term can be shrink the difference, I guess. So the precision is set to percent level? Uh, maybe I can show it. Yeah. And so this one, because, I mean, so here, maybe I have a two slide. I have six. Okay, <laughs> okay so if you, um, so, so far in our analysis, we didn't put any code on the EFT cutoff, okay? And then like, you might say that, okay, so you artificially gain like an event from the high invariant mass, and then you know you get where you expect the largest separation between signal and background, and you get artificial sensitivity. So another exercise we did was we, in the bean analysis of the uh, invariant mass of the lepton, or PT of the lepton, we got rid of the last bean one by one, and so like the, how the sensitivity changes. For example, uh, in the dilute mass, um, this solid line is where you include all the events of the infinity, okay? And now if you get rid of the uh, the last bin, only include event from zero to uh, 1800, then you get the, this, uh, this dashed line. Okay, so that means most of the sensitivity coming from you know near the two uh, TB or below, okay. And if you cut off more beans and only include the event from zero to like a point two TB, then you get this one. And then eventually, if you cut off all the TB event, keeping only zero to six hundred, then you, you you lose the sensitivity completely. So by doing this exercise, you can see like where the sensitivity coming. So it's not really uh, this sensitivity is not really coming from like a very five TB or six TB. It's likely coming from like a two TB or that, that's like how it works. Uh, okay, so this is like a, probably the last one. Um, okay, so this is like the um, the one we analyzed uh, following. You know, the, this is what we took as a benchmark a baseline analysis from the CMS. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. The switch uh, this is a 59 36 and this is a 138 in band. Uh, so here looking at this cubic coupling they report 2.6 and their normalization is like this one okay so there's a trace and if you get rid of trace there's a factor of four and there's a g cube okay and this is like a, a sensitivity they report on this coupling okay but if i take their uh, uh, paper literally uh, and also you know, pulled out the lambda sphere, then this is like exactly no normalization. So if I compare this and this one, uh, their CW is this C triple W divided by four times G cube, the factor of 10 is more different. So if I take this number divided by factor of 10, like a point, now it's a point of two, six, right? And then this guy use three times smaller statistics, so if I just you know, divide by two, roughly speaking, then point 0.1 something, right? The point 0.1 something is like uh, what they get here uh, with the PT code of the gamma A energy. So to me, actually, it's, they, are, they are similar, unlike what people said. People said, you know, this guy's always a win and this guy's always a sub leading and then practically not important, but I think uh, probably they ignore this uh, translation. So this is my understanding. And also, you know, the here, if you put cut very aggressively, then you can gain more, but then, you know, probably these people can do similar thing. They put cut very aggressively, then I guess I'm certainly sure that they can increase this one as well. So my, you know, so far I thought like a, what I did was kind of a practically not important, but now I changed my viewpoint. This can be practically important because they look similar. Um, is that, is the cut? This is a cut lower on the cut gamma, gamma. I think it's up, it, it's a lower cut, I guess. Lower cut. Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, this one is not that bad. Um, okay, so 
let me summarize. Um, so our electric electron process um, reveals new phase space to resurrect uh, interference. So this is like a different phase space uh, in, in a sense that the interference coming from SN diagram with the T channel light. So it's kind of softer phase space, but in as the in interference. And also our process is one of the uh, those, you know, the, the failing example of the effective double approximation due to the helicity selection rule. And we formally established by computing analytically in, in the point model. And we also propose new variable, it's called the VVF hardness. And this one can directly control the amount of energy going into the subsystem. So it, it's really like helping a lot. And probably we will maybe reanalyze, including this operator, uh, including this variable uh, in the future, even though in, in our case, we didn't do it because uh, then it's complicated. Can I have one more minute? Please, okay. please. <laughs> and, okay, so I, I did like uh, tribal coupling. I spent like many years in tribal coupling. I think uh, probably she knows that, you know, right? No? <laughs> I, I spent like many years in the uh, therapy gauge coupling, which is very important in determining in the determination of the uh, Higgs potential. So we, we wrote a paper in uh, 2015, which is cited by, um, by now, it's like, more than 2050. It's, it's become standard, and then we follow the um, this process uh, focusing on high luminosity with the previous you know, post ion freedom. And also, the um, right now, actually, this work is based, I mean, this talk is based on this work. But uh, previously, we also, uh, I also worked on the, this paper on this duplicate coupling. And we analyzed the, all this, um, the heavy structure and pointed out how to uh, put the bound in case you cannot reconstruct the scale of the process. I think that this paper has been very well received as well. So in this case, uh, we, are, we are kind of, you know, the person, the people uh, who analyze this triple gauge coupling here uh, in, 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 with, with, it, with the order, you know, time in the six operator in a considerable way. And we showed that the precision of this triple gauge, uh, triple gauge coupling is not it is also affected by the precision of this, you know, for example, tabu quark coupling, blah, blah, blah. So it's a very like, complicated business. Yeah. Any question? Does the word anomalous has particular meaning? Ah, anomalous means just deviation from the standard model. I don't think it's anomaly in the triangle either. No, it's not like. I, mean, I guess I, I'm sure not sure how to understand it. Yeah. And, and I remember when I was learning in grade school, hearing about this kind of thing, and also it was spoken in directions, precision measurement, and all that. So this higher dimensional operator sort of came back as an issue because. I think uh, the issue is because we didn't find any like uh, anything in the LHC, right? So, so I mean, it, so we, we, we are in the electroweak scale, and if if you know the LHC can prove the nationalist, then you would expect a new physics uh, near the electroweak scale. But now, if you assume the order one coupling between DSM and SM, then the null, the null result from the LHC directly says the, the lambda cutoff from LHC has to be like a PDB, right? So then we have a mass gap here. So whenever there is a mass gap, then EFT is a value. So I think uh, the fact that we don't see anything, it's a desperate, but at the same time, this de desperate situation gives us very systematic uh, approach that, you know, which is called the SMEFT. And I don't like SMEFT, but I think so far, you know, given the situation, this looks like, um, this looks like a one way we have to go inevitably. Yes, it has been like this you know, for the dark matter and the gravitation wave. Can I ask why you don't like SEM? No, this, this is your joke, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my life. So. <laughs> But life can be different from you. <laughs> uh, exactly.
I mean, the EFT, is, uh, I mean, the, I mean, if you ask, you know, people like, do you understand EFT? Oh, everyone says, oh, yes, EFT is like a straightforward, but when you apply EFT to data, there are so many complications and it's uh, really hard. Mm -hmm. Right now, all easy stuff has been done. Only got some hardcore computation or some issues are left. It's getting harder and harder. Yeah, so unless some people uh, come up with, you know, this like a brand new idea, I think the EFT will dominate like, uh, next uh, some time. I think that you can avoid. So in the near future term, what, which process will be interesting to study? For me or the, for the EFT? General. Uh, your personal viewpoint, and also I think that there should be some uh, interesting topics in the uh, SMEFT community. I mean, as I told you, like, I spend a lot of time um, in the determination of the triple uh, yes, wind yes. because I mean, the, I mean, I, I have uh, some fear that before I die, I will never know like, uh, <laughs> the exact shape of the Higgs potential because I mean, only when you go to 100 TB collider. And spend uh, when you go to like the end of the 100 TB collider operation, which is like a 2000, maybe 70, maybe like a, I, I will not exist that by the time you only achieve like a, about 2% precision of this guy. But then, even then, you don't know like uh, what precision of the quartic coupling of the Higgs. So, and I spent a lot of time. In the, I think this is a, one of, to me, like this is one of the important issues um, in collider. So did this situation improve the, if you created the minimum collider? I think the, if you go to minimum collider, um, okay, so if you go to 100 TB collider, um, the triple gate, triple hex coupling is good actually. You can achieve a few percent precision, but quality coupling, you cannot get any precision. It's all the one. Still like a 200, 300 deviation is a, a lot. But if you go to minimum collider, and you can go to like a, say like a 50 TB center of mass energy of million. Then I think you can measure quality coupling better than 100 TB. 50, 50 TB. Yeah. Something like that and some yeah. very high energy. Yeah. yeah. So precision came from the both couplings. With the same model, what, which what one? level? The precision from uh, triple X and triple KG. Uh, yeah. This one is a bit much better than this one. I mean, how much? For example, in the high luminosity, um, this one can go like uh, order of you know five percent or something, I guess. But this one still like uh, order of hundred uh, percent, I guess. Oh, I, uh, uh, but but however, um, I mean, so recently there is a big progress in the B tagging uh, using the machine learning. Because of that, now the mistake rate went down a lot actually by many others, and not many others by a, a few factors. So because of that, um, there is a hope that uh, people can measure uh, the this coupling up to 50% in the high luminosity area uh, But still, it's not good, but you know, uh, if you go like uh, two years back, then people said, for example, my paper, this one cannot be measured more than like 200% or something, but now, but at the time, the mistake rate was like a, a few percent, but now it's like a 0.1% there are huge improvements, I guess. Yeah, so the normally the experiments go better than theoretical expectation. That's my viewpoint. Because there are many smart people out there. So. Yeah, we cannot compete with the... <laughs> experiment. Yeah, also the theory people were trying to put the conservative limit, right? Because they cannot be aggressive. I mean, I don't think this topic is uh, that interesting to community, but you know, I, I found it interesting because of, uh, theoretically, and also uh, even practically maybe can be important. So. Any other questions? Now, let's thank you very much.